I mean, Karachi is going to be, by 2050, Karachi may be the largest city in the world. So you're not going to talk about Pakistan, you're going to talk about Karachi as a city, as a cosmopolitan city. It's not a retirement plan, this is the plan for the rest of my life. Welcome. So today's video is different from any of the other videos I have done before on my channel. Before I get into that, I just want to give a huge thanks to James Hoffman for making this video possible and letting this idea come to life. I could not be more grateful for this opportunity and for the help. So thank you. Uh, I, I could not have imagined this ever happening. Anyways, so the main purpose of this video is to look at Karachi's coffee scene, and more specifically, speaking to Mush Panjani from Coffee Vagera and Faisal from Nomad Coffee Studio. So Coffee Vagera is a chain of uh, cafes in Karachi that has a significant presence, and Nomad Coffee Studio is a specialty coffee roastery in, in Karachi as well. So I interviewed Faisal and Mush to see what made them get started? What, what was the driving force? How their journey's been like? Whether they think coffee will be able to compete with chai or if, if palates will change of the general population and coffee will become attractive to people, which it already is um, and it's coming up. We, we go into all of that great stuff. When we think of Pakistan, we think of chai being the dominant beverage. It's able to fit into any situation, any scenario. People have it in the morning, in the afternoons, in the evenings after work, when they're hanging out with their friends at home or the Daba, which is a local like roadside chai cafe. And it's become, it's, it's become a constant in almost every Karachiite's life. If not Karachiite, every Pakistani's life. But coffee has been having its moment lately. I've seen a bunch of cafes just pop up even during this pandemic in Karachi. And that's interesting. I, I, I wanted to see why that's going on. I think Karachi deserves its own coffee video, I guess. Although this in no way is all-encompassing, I unfortunately was not able to interview and talk to all the people that I wanted to talk to due to scheduling issues, but that's okay. I think, I think Faisal and Mush give us a good amount of insight in what they think is going on and what they're doing and how they're progressing towards the third wave, if you want to call it. I think, I think this is going to be a very interesting video. I definitely learned a lot and I hope you guys can take away something from it as well. This is the first time I'm doing something in this format. Cut me some slack. I, I don't know if it's gonna be amazing or not. I'm no Peter McKinnon or Casey Neistat, so please forgive, thanks. That's it, yeah, I think let's dive into it. Let's, let's get on with the show and see what's up. Thank you so much. For a number of years, um, I was boasting basically home roasters or small batch roasters mm -hmm. but all of it started I mean getting into and roasting coffee started when I started a restaurant project and the idea was how do you get the best coffee to the customer I was really involved in the bar side of it so I was trying to source good coffee started with getting an Italian coffee really good coffee company yeah I brought that coffee here it did really well I was like demand fluctuates what do I do with coffee I was sitting around. Everyone else was doing it, but I was asking difficult questions because if I wasn't happy, what am I supposed to sell to people? <laughs> I lived in Hong Kong for more than 20 years and I used to train people for sales, marketing, customer service. I was looking after 20 countries across Asia Pacific, so I used to travel extensively. And everywhere I would travel, I would sit and work from coffee shops. And so coffee shop, coffee pina was like everyday thing for me. But then in 2016 and 17, I had a few training assignments in Pakistan and I visited Pakistan like six, eight times for work. And every time I would come here for a week, 10 days of work and I would go and sit at coffee shops to work and obviously get quite frustrated. 
کہیں پہ جو ہے وہ پاور ساکٹس نہیں ہیں لیپ ٹاپ کنیکٹ کرنے کے لیے کہیں پہ وائی فائی نہیں چل رہا ہے فل اسپیڈ میں کہیں پہ کافی اچھی نہیں ہے کہیں پہ دین آئی اسٹارٹ گیٹنگ کافی روسٹڈ ان دبئی روسٹڈ پاپنگ اپ دیر بٹ دیٹ اسٹور واز ان فریش انف رائٹ بیکاز اینڈ دین بٹ آئی وڈ آئی ڈسکور ورکنگ ود روسٹرز ان دبئی واز ویل آئی کو ڈو دس اینڈ یو ون یو ہیڈ انف کافی ون یو بین تھرو انف کافی اینڈ ٹیسٹ لاٹ آف کافی یو اسٹارٹ آئی نیو I was getting a lot of Ethiopian and I knew Ethiopian coffees and uh, so I was like, no, we could do this better. Mm-hmm. That's where really the journey started, where I started sourcing greens and roasting at home, roasting in a garage or small office and just doing it myself. It was the search for better coffee for myself than for the customer. <laughs> and it was the idea because you're always chasing a cup so you, and you're traveling and so you're trying to get that it's all in your memory um, and your muscle memory and you're like okay how do I recreate that experience mm-hmm. um, so that's what it's, it's about searching for a better cup yeah, more than anything else yeah. تو وہ جو انسپریشن ہوئی وہاں سے کہ یہاں پہ تو کافی شاپ ہے ہی نہیں ایون انٹرنیشنل چینس ہیو کنورٹیڈ دم سیلس ان ٹو ریسٹورینٹس اینڈ دیٹس وین ایک بہت ہی پرانا میرا ڈریم تھا کہ میں ہانگ کانگ میں کبھی ریٹائر ہو کے چھوٹا سا کافی شاپ کھولوں گا تو ایک دم سے وہ ڈریم میرا دوبارہ سے فرنٹ پہ آ گیا دس از ناٹ اے ریٹائرمنٹ پلان دس از دی پلان فار دا ریسٹ آف مائی لائف اے کافی شاپ میکس این امپیکٹ آن پیپلس لائف سو دی آئیڈیا دیٹ اے کافی چین دیٹ از گنو امپیکٹ دا کمیونٹی دیٹ از گنو برنگ دا کافی کلچر دیٹ از گنو ایجوکیٹ پیپل اباؤٹ کافی دیٹ از گنو ریز اویئرنیس اباؤٹ کافی دیٹ از گنو جسٹ بی ہول نیو تھنگ and this this has the potential of becoming the starbucks of pakistan i don't say starbucks because i'm a starbucks fan but as in ke har gali mein har kone mein har area mein ek hona chahiye to ye uska ye potential hai and i just couldn't let go of that idea it was very clear in my mind that worst case scenario it won't work and i will say okay everybody was right it worked but i don't have a regret because i at least i tried But where do people learn about coffee or where do they develop the passion? Um, it, it's at restaurants. You go and you have a good cup of coffee and then you chase, like, repeat that experience, right? So that's where you get to create a customer. So that's why a barista is such an important tool in the market. I mean, what we try to do here is invest in some space in trying to get baristas and train. And so getting into this formal roasting space, the idea was that I can devise a method and a business where I can consistently give good coffee. And as I said, um, a service where you can teach people about coffee, teach restaurants how to do better coffee, help them in getting customers, um, help train their staff. So it became very clear in my mind that the coffee shop that I'm opening is a pure coffee shop. No kitchen, no cooking. Our checklist was very clear. Power sockets for everyone. Wi-Fi always works. Coffee is supposed to be absolutely awesome. Price is reasonable. Toilet will be clean. Music will be well planned. Proper playlist. Updated. Upgraded regularly. And the staff will be happy and cheerful. And that had become the, the dream and the checklist in my mind. That's what we are doing. And the whole focus is on coffee. 80-90% of our revenue profits come from selling beverages and coffee and other snacks on the side. When I first started, I, I, there was no, no roasting companies here. And I checked, I was very clear that it has to be 100% Arabica and it has to be a single origin. So we started buying from local importers. And as soon as uh, Raz, Raz is our roasting partner. So as soon as we heard of Raz, Uh, that they're doing local roasting. We jumped at the opportunity and uh, I was probably one of the first cafes uh, in Karachi who said we're going to switch immediately to locally roasted. The idea of change and the human palate and human culture is fascinating, right? What you hear in Pakistan and I've been hearing for a very long time that people don't like coffee here. They don't like that it's bitter, and uh, they like chai. Well, I, I'm the generation that saw Pizza Hut come here. I saw McDonald's come here. Uh, so I've seen a whole life of change 
So we are not predetermined to like tea or coffee. What coffee is and what even tea is, but what coffee has been historically, one of the most important aspects of coffee is that it's a social field. Coffee is about cafes. It was in the 15th to 16th century Mall India. It was in the 60s, 50s uh, India right after partition. It was in Italy. It is in the U.S. today. It's what specialty coffee is today. It's all about human beings socializing with each other over a cup of coffee. So it's about culture. Uh, so whenever we're talking about can coffee come, it, it's about the cafe culture to a very large extent. The cafe culture is here. There's one thing that keeps on increasing even in COVID is cafes are still opening. So if you're saying can coffee also make space for itself? I think definitely coffee can make the space for itself. We have proved the cafe model. Before Coffee Vegera, everybody said this is not going to work in Pakistan, we have to sell food. But we proved, and which opened the doors for a lot of new entrepreneurs, which is brilliant. In fact, at least two or three new cafes have come up which are exact copies, replicas. I mean, they haven't been able to copy our community stuff and our marketing and all of that, but they have done it and we are happy that uh, this concept has worked, people are doing it. Everybody doesn't have to become a coffee regular franchisee. Some people want to start their own. We wish them good luck. So we've already seen that happening and it's only going to grow and grow and grow. The more we grow, people will realize, okay, this is a coffee shop model. Why can't I open something like that? There's a tendency in our market, because we've become a very class-driven market, to associate certain products with certain classes. That's also created, that's a social creation. Now, if you go to a coffee-producing country, and if you look at the people farming coffee and drinking that coffee, be it Indonesia or Brazil, farmers are journey around the world pretty down the ladder, right? But they also drink their own coffee. Um, same in Ethiopia. So why is it that coffee in Pakistan is considered uh, to be something that the elite enjoy and it's inaccessible, right? So it's mostly a supply chain and economic issue because our neighbor in India, coffee has a very different space in different parts of India, but India produces coffee, and pretty good coffee now. We never got to develop or establish a franchise culture and there is a reason for that, but it doesn't mean you can't skip that step and have small accessible cafes, specialty cafes, or manual brewing bars, or whatever you want. You know. Equal opportunities became a cause for us. That it's going to be no religion bias, no age bias, transgenders, whoever. We are open to hiring everybody. And that became another cause. We knew that in Pakistan, there's a lot of uh, women who make amazing stuff at home. And they're always trying to market themselves. So we saw an opportunity to help that community that what if we only bought from these women entrepreneurs. And then few other ideas came along when we heard about uh, a huge community of uh, deaf and dumb who don't go out to restaurants because they can never communicate with anyone. So we decided to learn sign language, which hasn't been implemented 100% across all the outlets yet because it's a challenge, but that's what we would love. Same thing, we created a menu in Braille so a visually blind, visually impaired person or a blind person would be very comfortable coming here and reading the menu and ordering all by himself without any help for the very first time in Pakistan. At our restaurants and our first sort of line of interaction with the customers are really not talking special. But there are roasters that are popping up. There are entrepreneurs like myself. There are people like you, entrepreneurs as well. We're talking speciality, we're talking to customers who have customers, but the restaurants are not doing what they're supposed to do, right? So there's this big gap, there's this dysfunctionality that somehow we've missed the game. And as I said, that's because that industry is suffering by itself for other reasons, but it's not investing in a very important department of the cafe culture, which is Baristas, right? We have those conversations all the time. 
from day one. I mean, we have this wall dedicated to education. So it starts with the history of coffee and then the bean to cup story and then the know your coffee, six basic kinds of coffees in black and white and what is the difference between latte and cappuccino and all of that. So we're very big on this. When dining is open, whenever a customer seems to be slightly interested in any one of this, me or one of the managers would come and start a conversation about coffee and how much do you know and are you interested in this, did you know this, did you know that. So we're very big on education and we believe that we have made a huge impact in the last three years. We've been educating people about coffees through these posters, through additional information on our website and Instagram, through our Twitter. I love making videos, uh, so I do, doc I do infomercials. Um, the first video was what goes into making a great coffee because people yeah. used to ask, what is so special about your beans? And every day we would be asked that question, okay, which beans are you using? And we used to tell them it's not just the beans, it's the whole, it's everything. The quality of the water, the milk, the technique, the pressure, the temperature, the temping and the leveling and the whole process. And we made a video on that, which which obviously which, which became very, very popular because for the first time, there was a video about coffee in Urdu language for the local population of Pakistan which explained the eight, ten different things that go into making great coffee. I don't see the old school business people changing their habits or their perspectives, but I think the young entrepreneurs are very savvy. They're, they're picking up, there's so much more knowledge that they're teaching themselves. There are baristas actually who are teaching themselves. And who's going to put it all together and get it right? We don't know. Why can't we invent an espresso machine? Because once you open it up, I mean, the guy who fixed my roaster, who was doing venting for me, was like, you know, I can make that. And I'm pretty sure he can make that. Because <laughs> there are people like that here. It's just that who's going to invest in it? Who's going to think that it's worthwhile? And yeah. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. I just wanted to close the video with a few final thoughts. The specialty coffee scene isn't as sophisticated or as, I don't know, as glamorous. And it doesn't need to be sophisticated or glamorous, I think. We don't need to have expensive uh, Akaya Pearl Scales and La Marzocco's and just very sophisticated and expensive equipment. Although it does make a difference, yes. But I don't know, uh, I don't think that should be a standard. But I think, I, I think Karachi's made huge leaps in getting to where it is in the coffee scene that it has now. I, I think it's, it's gonna go to great places. This is just the beginning. Another final thing about one of the cafes that really intrigued me, and you might've seen some B-roll throughout the video about the, of this cafe, and that is Kohi Coffees. Now, why I think that this coffee shop is interesting is because they're one of the first places that I've seen who've really been a bit more conscious about their equipment choice. And I appreciate that. Like they're the first people who I've seen who have an OCD distributor for the portafilters to get better extraction for their espressos. They use scales as well for, for measuring their dose going in. They're one of the first people who I've seen starting pour overs in, in Karachi. Uh, not, not the first ones, definitely, but one of the few. I, I know equipment doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm kind of contradicting what I just said, but it shows that they care. And I was surprised to see their choice of grinders. They had a Barazza Encore and a Barazza Sete. Yes, they're somewhat domestic grinders, but I think these are, these are great choices and I really appreciate that. And I've never seen anybody do that in Karachi. I'm sure somebody else is, and I might not know of it. But I think Kohi is doing uh, great stuff. And Wakar, who is the barista at Kohi Coffees, one of the most passionate people I've seen. He was extremely, extremely hungry to learn more about specialty coffee. He doesn't have any type of formal SCA training, but he surely has that passion and drive to, to become great at his craft. And echoing what Fessel said, if we 
really encourage, empower, and invest in people like Gokar, the coffee scene can go to, go to great heights. And I'm excited to see that. So that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you. See you in the next one.